Praise the Lord. I want to go to the Lord in prayer this morning. We have some things to remember, to bring to you today. Let's take them to the Lord and ask that he minister in a powerful way. Uh, of course, remember all those that are dealing with the virus and uh, that the Lord would be with them, touch them, and, uh, and just, just deliver them from this sickness. Uh, all the people that is in the hospital, I'm sure you know somebody, and uh, those that are sick and in need of a touch from the Lord, all that are in assisted living in nursing homes. Remember these, these precious people in these places. Uh, many of them haven't even seen their families in months. And so please remember them and their families, that the Lord would be with them in a special way. Uh, those that would like to be here today but cannot, remember those that for some reason or another cannot be with us today. Uh, the condition, remember the condition and the state of the church world. I think that's very important. Remember the condition and the state of the church world today. That God would move in a powerful way in the church. Remember Sister Elizabeth Grace for surgery. The Lord would touch her. Also Dolores Polipek, her mom and mother-in-law. Remember them. Myra Dunlap. This is Brother Jesse behind me here. Uh, his grandmother. She's having a heart procedure, so please remember her today. Uh, the Gerald Tillman family. His mother passed away, so please remember this family as they go through a time of loss. Uh, Cindy Anzalone is suffering with a bad cough today, so please remember her and her dad. He is dehydrated and needs a touch of the Lord. Also, Sister April said that uh, her mother-in-law, uh, uh, Brother Rex's wife, and I'm trying to think of her name, Ann. Sister Ann is in need of a touch today. She's done something to her arm and is not able to be here. So just a lot of things to remember, but I want to tell you something. Don't get overwhelmed. Don't get overwhelmed. Okay? Don't get overwhelmed. We don't read this list to overwhelm you. We read this list because we trust and believe that God, the God that we all serve, He is able to touch every one of these in His own special kind of a way. Amen. Greater is He. I've been reading that scripture where, where Jesus said, He said, He said, He said, a greater than Jonah is here. Then He said, A greater than Solomon is here. And then John said, the greater one is in you. Amen. So the greater one is able today to meet every one of these needs. There's nothing impossible with God. So I want you to help me today. Let's go to him like we really, really believe he's about to move. Amen. Let's talk to him today and ask him to do these things. Father, we bless you today. We thank you, Lord God, for your presence that we feel in this house, Lord. We feel the presence of God as we've sung, Lord. I do feel the presence of the Lord in this house. And today, Lord, we bring all these needs before you. God, there's so many, God, that need a touch of heaven today. And Lord, we know that you're the one that is able to come and meet every person, every need right where they are. And so today, Lord, I ask you to do great and mighty things. Lord, those that are in the hospital today, I pray that the Holy Ghost would walk up and down the halls of the hospitals, Lord, and touch those, Lord, whose hearts and lives need a touch, those that their bodies need a touch from heaven. I pray that you touch them today. Lord, minister to those that are sick and afflicted among us today, our loved ones, our family members. Touch them now. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus and all those that are going through loss of loved ones, comfort their hearts. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. And now, Father God, as we gather in this house, as we lift up our praise, our hearts to you, we ask that you move in this house today. Touch every need, every life that's in this room. And God will give you all the praise for everything that you do. And it's in Jesus' name we believe it all. And the church said amen. Now give the Lord the greatest hand clap of praise you could give him today. Amen. Praise the Lord. He is a good God and he loves you. Amen. Get ready. Let's turn our hearts, our focus on him. Won't you help us worship God? Hallelujah. Can we lift our hands to heaven today? And just lift up our worship to him. Come on. He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the glory. Yes, he is. Oh. So 
to us on the cross. While we lift our hands and tell him, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for not giving up on me. Thank you, God, for being faithful. When I was your
if you believe there's no one who can match the love of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe in this house that we're going to see signs and wonders in this place. Anybody agree with me? Come on, miracle signs and wonders. If you're ready to walk into that, just lift your hands and say, God, do it in this house. If you did it before, God, you can do it again. If you've done it for one, you can do it for me. God, if you've done it in one family, you can do it in my family. I believe that nothing, nothing is too hard for you. Nothing's too hard for you. Come on, buddy, declare that. And I know we're in the second verse. And I just want you to sing the second verse one more time. Just, just right now. Just go ahead and sing it. And I want you to listen to the words. The first one says, walking around these walls, I thought by now they fall. But understand, it's not just the wall, but it's the darkness. It's the darkness, and the Scripture declares that gross darkness would cover the earth right before the second coming of the Lord. And 
and the and the walls are 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 bad and and a lot of times we it's a constant reminder of the captivity that we may be in whatever that case may be whatever that wall is it could be a wall of cancer it could be a wall of fear a wall of poverty a wall of great distress whatever it is it could be many things but what the enemy loves to do is not only confine us, but he wants to come and cover us with darkness. He wants it to be so dark that it seems like that there's no, not only is there no way out, but there's such a heaviness, a heaviness. And me and my lady, we, we drove to a place yesterday or day before yesterday and there was one thing we noticed about where we were. We, would do, we just kind of got off by ourselves and me and Brother John and Sister Rita and we went to this place to where I, we could just maybe get away from ourselves for a moment. And one thing we noticed, where we were, the heaviness was not there. The heaviness of of what's going on around us. Every everyday life, the heaviness was not there. And they, they, that's, they something that came to me. He, the, the enemy don't only want to shackle us and, and put us behind walls, but he wants to come and make things so dark, so dark that you can't see anymore. And you wonder, God, is there ever going to be a clear day? And I, I, I just feel like I need to say this to somebody this morning. And I want you to hear, hear Pastor. I, 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 I have been in contact with a lot of people. And I have walked in some dangerous situations as far as my health is concerned. And, and this coming Friday, I'll be going in another one of those situations that, that my lady knows nothing about and nobody else does except the people involved with it. But I, I'm going to be walking into a place that a lot of people and a lot of pastors right now wouldn't walk in. But I want to tell you, we live in a time when people need to know that the church and the men and women of God have the answer. We have the answer. We have the answer. We have that answer and His name is Jesus. It's not in the denomination and it's not in the religious order. And, and, and I'm really getting a little bit complex with people saying, well, it's not all about a building. I want you to understand, I know the church is not the building. I've said it myself. It's not. But thank God we have a place. That we can walk into. And all the rest of the junk has to stay outside. But when we walk in here, this is the covering of God. This is the house of the Lord. And I'm telling you, I've come to lift up of one name, and his name is Jesus. i come to tell you, there's not but one answer, and his name is Jesus. But I, I, I just got to say this this morning. I'm preaching on the subject, and, I, and I, I'll, I'll tell you this, it's a two-part series. I won't even get started with it much this morning. I'll take it to a certain point, but they, I've got an answer for the scoffers. And I, and I just want you to hear me. I'm surrounded today by medical personnel. I've got a nurse standing right here. I've got a doctor. Where's my doctor at? She here? Yes. Raise your hand. I've got a doctor. She comes to my home. 
she checks pastor every day she comes by my house and she checks me it's, and it's and, and she does it cause she loves me but she knows i love you and i never want to be in a place to where i would stand behind here and 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 not be healthy enough and well enough to a point that i would ever infect anybody and 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 i've had all kind of ants questions asked me they have they've asked me about math they've asked me about where to go and what not to go i just want to say this to you and get this out listen use common sense if 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 you feel like you need to wear a mask for heaven's sake wear a mask if you don't then don't but i i, I want to say this to you i thank god that we have the answer. It's, it's, it's important that we have the answer. I'm instructed by the Holy Spirit to do certain things. And, and, and some of those things I don't share with anyone. But I'm instructed by him to do certain things. Because he promised us. He had put food on our table, raiment on our back. And he promised us he would wipe our fevered brow. That means if sickness comes, he's going to wipe it. He's going to take care of it. He's going to, no matter what it is, he's going to be there for us. But I want you to understand. One, one, it's, it's, it's my Wanda here this morning. It's, it's Wanda, it's, it's Wanda Mitchell here, uh, or Carter here. No, she's not here. But, she, but, but she came by. She's in the nursery. She came by here this week and. No, no, I will run get her. I, she come by here and she said something this week that, that I think it's, it's paramount in, in our lives today. She had went to, she had went to that world up there, uh, Andalusia. And she had, she had went to Andalusia and, and on her way back, she said the Spirit of God began to speak to her. And she began to speak to her. And she began, she said, Pastor, he began to speak to me concerning you. Now, I, I'll be honest with you. That don't, that don't happen very often. It, it don't. And, and when, when someone says, Pastor, I have something I need to say to you, then my, my spiritual senses... They kind of, well, they don't kind of, they just perk up. And I, and I want to hear, and it's not that I'm selfish, it's, it has nothing to do with that, that I, that I just want to hear what God has to say about me. But it's, it's my calling, it's my position, it's, it's who and what I am concerning you. And it's everything in my life spiritually is, is concerning you. It's what God's got to say. And, and, I, and I, want, I want Precious to come here for a minute and I want her to just tell you about what she had to say to her pastor. Well, um, the end of the week I was driving to Bruton and then came back. Well, as I was listening to, it was just a Christian radio station every single song that I heard was about joy. And joy is a difficult thing in the time that we're living in right now because there are a lot of people who have no idea what true joy and true peace is. Well, as I drove, you know, you kind of feel a little crazy because you're having joy and you're joyful and people around you, I'm sure they think you're a little crazy because <laughs> I feel like sometimes you're walking around and you're singing and your heart is so full of joy and it's kind of a crazy joy. Well, as I drove back home, well, when I went, pastor was just on my mind the whole drive and I could not shake it. And as I went into Brute and I came back out and I turned back on my radio, immediately pastor was the person on my mind this whole trip. And my heart just got to pondering and my thoughts were on him about, you know, he's having to make lots of difficult decisions in this time. He, you know, deciding what best to do to keep us safe and, 
you know, and making decisions and there's lots of pressure. And then my mind kept going to that God is the reason for our joy. And the word in his word, you know, we should not let this world rob us of that joy and that peace. And I just, as I got closer to Milligan, I just thought I've got to go by and just hug Pastor and just tell him that our joy does not come from this world. There's a greater joy that we get through Jesus Christ. And this world and the things that we're going through should not rob us from that. And that should not give us a spirit of worry. Because when we start going to Walmart or stores and everybody's wearing masks and all of these pressures are on, our heart becomes, you find you, you have to work to say, Lord, I, I trust you and I'm not worried about this. You're giving me joy in my heart. You're giving me peace. And my eyes are not on all this stuff that's going around. So when I came by the church, um, I thought, Pastor's going to think I'm crazy because I don't really have a big message to tell him. But the only thing I have to share with him is do not let what's going on around you and the decisions that you're having to make rob the joy that God has given you and the peace that he's given you. And do not let that weigh on you and drag your heart down because it can make you sick. Even though you're trusting in God, but all of those decisions and that worry can cause your heart to be heavy. And so I came by the church. Actually, I called him and said, are you at the church? And then, of course, it made me cry. And then I came by, and I just had to love on him and hug him and, you know, and just tell him that, you know, God's joy that is in our heart is not about what this world tells us. It is about us deciding and us trusting in God enough to trust that whatever we're going through, that God is going to give us joy and peace through that. Even in its crazy peace and its crazy joy that the world is not going to understand. But actually, that's part of the fun end of it. <laughs> that's the kind of children this church produces. And, 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 and I wanted her to tell you that. And the reason I wanted her to tell you that was this book says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. It's your strength. And that's, that's why the joy is important. That's why he wrote in this book, Leap for Joy. He didn't say leap for finances. He didn't say leap for fame. He didn't say leap for prosperity. He said leap for joy. He said leap for joy. And and, and I, 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 I am so thankful for that because yesterday afternoon, sitting at my desk in this house, in my office, praying and studying for what God would have me give you, my telephone rang, and it was a woman on the other end. And she said, Pastor White, I said, yes. She said, listen, she said, my husband is having a stroke. She said, he's having a stroke. Said his, we were driving down the road and he just all of a sudden went limp on his left side. He said, all kinds of things begin to happen. And she said, I can't take him to a hospital. I, I don't know, nothing else to do. But she said, all I could think about if I could just get a hold of somebody at that church and she called my number and I answered it and she said listen we're coming by and if you could just if you wouldn't mind just coming out and anointing him and praying for him not only did I anoint him I told them to meet me at my home me and my lady anointed that man with oil we began to pray the numbness left his left side the paralysis left his left side. All of a sudden, everything that was trying to go on in his body, it began to subside. And this morning, he is alive. He is well. There's no results of that stroke whatsoever. There's no jaw, drawled face, no, no anything. There. No numbness, no anything. I'm going to tell you. That's why I say, we got the answer. We got the answer to the girl that we raised that won't submit to God. 
We got the answer to the man that's bound by a neck of a bottle and don't know how to let go of it. We got the answer to the girl that, that seemingly has lost everything and she's lost her self-esteem and everything else. We got the answer and his name is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. So walking around the walls, we thought by now it would fall. And the testimony is, Jesus has never failed us yet. He has never failed us yet. And then this song deals with the darkness. And this is what is most frightening to people because after a while, they get used to the confinement of the wall. Sometimes they put up their own walls and they put them up and won't let certain things happen inside of them or around them because of disappointments and hurts of the past. And pastor could go on and on. But then the darkness sinks.
your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me yet. Come on, can we lift those hands and just worship the name of Jesus? Come on. I believe what pastor said is true. I'm thankful for this house. Anybody else thankful for this house of worship? Come on, I believe his presence is here in this house. Hallelujah, we love you, Jesus. There's no one like you. Oh. Come on, can we lift our hands and thank God for this place of worship? Come on. Come on, where we can find healing and strength, freedom in this house to worship the name of Jesus. Oh. sing to you and I dance with you and I cry before you here in this place and I give my all just to behold you just to be near you here in this place just you and me hallelujah everything so clear and now i am free it's just you and me i don't care who sees i don't care who hears because oh how i love of worship oh to be with you Lord we love this place
worship yourself through it. Hallelujah. You can't just sit there and say, God, you bring the blessing to me or you bring the victory to me. You may be in a dark dungeon cell and you may feel like you're chained up, but if you'll start worshiping, not yeah. only will God set you free, Hallelujah. he'll set everybody else around you free and that power and that presence will come to you.
We're free to give to the kingdom of God and worship him in our giving. Amen. How many of you want to be blessed? How many of you are blessed today? Oh, yes. Listen, we want you to know that we thank you. On behalf of Pastor, we thank you for your continued giving to the kingdom of God. And we know that God is going to richly bless you as he already has. He'll continue to do that. So let's just take and pray on the offering. Most of you have already come and give this morning. But let's do like we always do. Take our offering, clutch it to our chest this morning. And just ask God to bless it. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. Because we know that you're faithful. You haven't failed us yet. And Lord, we know that you will not fail us. Because your promises in your word are yes and amen. Lord, we pray God now that you would take this gift, get this offering today, God. We pray God that you bless it, multiply it. Minister to every person in this house today, God. Bless them today. And, Lord, we know that you will, and we give you thanks for it in Jesus' name. Amen.
I was standing back there and I was thinking, you know, in old church, in old church, they didn't think they had even sung a song till they did it about 15 or 20 times. And the reason for it was, every time they sung it, they felt more and more and more and more of the power of God yeah. through that song. Come on, preacher. Every time they sung it. And I love the part, son, where it says that this thing runs in my veins too. <laughs> this, this, this that they got in the upper room on that day, it runs in me and it runs in you and it runs in you. It's in your veins as well. And I believe I just believe, I, I can't help it. This is the answer for the scoffers right here. It's when men and women will get together in one mind and in one accord, and they begin to thank God for everything that he has done for them. And they begin to worship, and they begin to praise. All of a sudden, the Holy Ghost just can't stand it anymore. And he has to allow his presence to come and move and minister to the lives of his people. They say, I, I, I was going to do this later, but they say, I think now it's a perfect time. And I want you to go back and sing that part about where it's running in my veins too. Pentecost of fire. But before you do it, I'll, you can do it in a minute. Is there a young man here by the name of Braden? Braden? Come here, buddy. Come here. Hallelujah. It's a lot, of, we, you, you don't know, Braden. But, come help me, Dennis. <laughs> but Braden has a brain tumor. And as far as I know, Braden, you ever been here? You ever been here? Why don't you come today? I'm with my cousins today. I would have uh, liked to come. And you wanted to be prayed for? Yes, sir. How many of you believe that God can heal? Not only can He set free and deliver, but He can heal. And I don't believe Braden just come to come today. I, I believe there's a divine intention to this. And I believe He's got to go to South Carolina or someplace like that. When are you going? 28th is a uh, surgery. And you're going to have surgery? Okay. Braden, I know a man. I know a man. Amen. 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 I know, I know a man that he got his doctorate degree from the throne room of heaven. And he had to pay for it by allowing them to tie him up to a hitching post and take a cat of nine tails and they whooped his back. And this man says that by the stripes that were laid on his back, you are healed. And his spirit is in this room. Do we have a witness that that flows in you today? That's, that's part of your DNA as a man and a woman of God. He, he is that kind of God. Braden, I, the, the, the story that Pastor told you yesterday about the man that was having the stroke, I saw the visible signs of that stroke on his body. It was there. He was limp. He couldn't move. He had no feeling. His face was drawing. But I anointed him 
with the same oil I'm fixing to no anoint you with. And, and that doctor I was just telling you about, he walked right up to that man, and when I laid my hands on him, it was a signal that the Lord was going to lay his hands on him. And the scripture says that we can lay hands on the sick and physically see them recover. Right now, right now I want you to just raise your hands up as a sign of surrender. Father, here we are. As the sister said, touch his eyes, God. Touch his eyes. Do this work. But I curse this tumor. I curse this tumor in the name of Jesus. I want to curse it in your name, Jesus. And I want it to be a sign to the scoffers of this world that you no longer heal again. God, I want you to heal him. I want your power and your might. I curse this brain tumor in the name of Jesus. I command it in that name to shrink right now in the name of Jesus. God, when he goes to the doctor and they rescan, God, don't let it be there. Let it be gone in the name of Jesus. You, God, and you alone can do such things. You're still able to save and deliver and heal. And God, I ask you, God, in the name above all names, in the name of Jesus, God, that you will heal this young man from this time forward. Heal him, God. Make him well. Show the doctors what the great physician can do. Show them that you still in the healing business. Heal him today. God, I ask you to move. Minister to him. God, you're able. It will be gone and it will never come back again. It will be gone and it will never come back again in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, nothing is impossible with you. With man, it may look impossible, but God, through you, all things are possible. We hold on to the truth of your word. You are able, God. Able, you are able, you're able. Not only able, but you more than able. God bless him, Jesus. Bless this young man. A heart turned towards you will get your attention. And we turn our heart towards you. Believing God, believing God that you can move and minister in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, Brandon, give him a clap of praise. Just, just start praising him. Just give him a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Come on, folks. Give God a shout of praise in this house. Hallelujah. We believe it in the name of Jesus. My, my veins too. And it costs no fire, stirring something new. You're not going to run out of miracles anytime soon. Resurrection power. It rides in my veins too I believe there's another miracle here in this room Hallelujah This is the sound of a dry bones rattling This is the praise make a dead man walk again So open the
the Lamb of God. Yes, Holy Spirit, yes. Hallelujah. I, I, I want you to get comfortable. I want you to just relax, get comfortable. Now, I want you to imagine that Braden was your son. I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to imagine that Braden was your boy or your daughter or your grandchild. And they had a tumor on their brain that they were fixing to have to extract by means of surgery. And I want you to imagine a few moments ago that as we laid hands on Braden's head. And God took his right hand of power, reached through his hair, through his skull, into the exact point that that tumor is on your child's brain. Can you see it? Can you see the bloodiness of it? Can you see how it started out small, but it grew and it grew and it grew? And it's affecting his eyesight and it's affecting his hearing. And you notice that your child is acting different. But a few moments ago, the hand of God went through all the tissue and sinew of flesh and went to the exact point of where that tumor has attached itself to the brain of your child. And you watch God take his thumb and his pointer finger, and he takes a hold of that tumor, and he, he squeezes it, and it explodes and it is no longer there. Imagine that. Now you worship like he just did it. You give him praise like he just did it. It's your child. It's your daughter. It's your son. Hallelujah. He just did it just for you. Just for you. Give him praise. How would you worship? How would you pray? How would you glorify him? How would you lift his name up? How would you dance? How would you shout? How would you worship? He said that 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 he said Hallelujah! 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 Give me praise! Give me glory! Give me praise! Give me glory! He said that he said that he said Oh God, you alone can heal, you alone can save, you alone can deliver, you alone, God, can set the captive free, you alone. Hallelujah. I believe he's squeezing some things. I saw that in my spirit. I believe he's squeezing some things. I believe. 
believe he's moving. I believe he's ministering. I believe he's touching all over this place. Not only here, but on the radio, by way of the internet. I believe God is moving and ministering. I believe he's meeting the need. Hallelujah. That's the kind of God we serve. That's the kind of God we serve. I say unto thee that that I do for one, I will do for another. Hear me, hear me, hear me. That which I will do for one, I will do for another. If I commanded death to live for Lazarus, I will command death to come back to life for you. Because I was able to walk on the water and shout peace to a storm. I will walk on the waters of your life. I will shout peace to every storm in your life. I say unto thee this day. Lift up thy head, shout unto me. Let me know that you love me. Let me know that you worship me. And I say unto thee, I will withhold no righteous or good thing for thee. I will show thee my power and my mind. I will be with you. I will walk with you. I will stay with you. For I will not leave thee nor forsake thee in this hour. Thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know. I, I, would you just stay where you at for a second? I want to read you a scripture. You don't have to sit down. You can keep standing. You're not going to be able to stand it. But Second Peter, there's several things that we're going to look at when we get to this concerning scoffers. In the Second Peter chapter three, it says, knowing. In verse number three, he says, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers. And, and, and I want to tell you what that means. Scoffer is a noun. And most of the time, it's done poorly. They don't say scoffer, they say scoffers. And it means someone who laughs or someone who mocks or treats something with great contempt and speaks about a person or an idea in a way that shows that they think that a person or an idea is stupid or silly. But he said in 2 Peter 3, and verse three, he said, knowing this first that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust saying where is the promise of his coming in other words they will openly mock us and they'll mock the word of God by saying well where is the promise of his coming he said in their actions, they're saying even the idea of it is stupid. Even the idea of it is silly. And maybe to cut it down to where the mother the rubber meets the road real quick in 2 Peter 3 and 1, it says this second epistle, this was his last, this was his last epistle. Now remember, Peter is the guy that denied Jesus during the time of the arrest and the whipping mic and 
right before the crucifixion and even after the crucifixion. But also understand that this is the same Peter that they called the big fisherman in the Word of God. And also, he was a member of a little company. There was three of them, Peter, James, and John. And Jesus looked at them and said, I'm going to call every one of you sons of thunder. You know, Peter was the one that when they came to arrest Jesus, that the high priest's servant grabbed the hold of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, and Peter took his sword and cut his ear off. Now, I, he, he did not mean to cut his ear off. He wanted to cut his head off. But he swayed, and when he swayed, the Scripture said he got his ear because if he had cut his head off, then Jesus would have had to pick up his head and put it back on his body. But he picked up his ear, son, and put it back on his body, and that was not even enough to sway the scoffers. And he looked at Peter and said, Peter, if you live by that sword, you'll die by it. But he, Peter was the one that when six other disciples had called a big draw of fish, that they couldn't drag the net to shore because there were so many of them. Now, this is a different story than when they tarried all night, but this is when six disciples had went fishing and the net was so full, all six of them could not pull it ashore. But the Bible says that the big fisherman walked down to the shore side, told all the rest of them to stay on shore, and he waded out there and grabbed the net, slung it over his shoulder, and dragged it back to the shore. Peter by himself did physically what six men could not do together. He called him the big fisherman. This is the same Peter that on the day of Pentecost kicked open the door of a balcony in an upper room, stood out empowered under the anointing of the Holy Ghost and preached a message and 3,000 got saved. He was bilingual at that moment. Everything he was saying, every language in the world was hearing him that was gathered there. And they got saved. Oh, this is the one that said so many things. But Peter now says this second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in verse number one of 2 Peter chapter 3 in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that you be mindful of the words which were spoken before the holy prophets, and by them, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. He said, you stir something up in you by your way of remembrance, by your way of remembrance. Let me tell you something, and I wrote this down and I want to read it to you because I wrote it as God gave it to me. And I, be, I, be, I, be, I begin to write it. I don't even know where it's at. This is it. I want you to hear me. How many of you, by way of remembrance of what God has done for you already, not just what he's doing for you in this time, Richard, the what he's done for you already. It, that means if he never does anything else for you, he's already done enough for you that you are serving for every breath that you have left in your body because saving you was enough. Saving your family was enough. Moving the way he's moved in your life was enough. Directing your steps was enough. I want to say this. Peter said in 1 Peter 5 and chapter, chapter 5 and verse 4, 
He said, when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fades not away. That fades not away. And I want to make a statement. There's never a day or a moment or a time in my walk with the Lord that I feel I just might not win this battle called life. You hear me? There's never been a moment with my walk with the Lord, and God was, I, I just started writing this, that I've ever failed, I just might not win the battle of life. Or I do not have the strength within me to have victory over this thing that I'm facing. Never. And I say that not in a pious spirit, but I say that through the blood of Jesus Christ. For I feel if I do that, if I feel that way, then I diminish the power of God in my life to a point that I place someone else on my heart other than the Lord Jesus Christ. And that I give way, Jesse, to somebody else. Or maybe I give way to a weapon that the enemy has formed against me. If I ever, Tanya, think any other way, I feel to me it would be a great sin. I said it before and people have asked me what I meant by it, but I want you to understand unbelief to me is sin. For if I believe not, then I feel I live a hypocritical life. Because if I feel that I don't believe that the God I serve will meet Robbie's needs, if I lay hands on Robbie and pray for him, and I feel I just pray out of position instead of power, if I pray that way or out of routine instead of power and belief, then if I don't believe for Robbie, how in God's name can I ever believe for myself? How could I ever believe God saved me to begin with? Or God was with me to begin with? Oh no, there's nobody, there's never been a day. Is there anybody can say, after I found Jesus, there's never been a day that the devil's ever convinced me, Alex, to ever give up, to ever stop, to ever quit, to ever get to a point that I give the enemy space in my life. Understand that. He has overcome for us and because of that, every stronghold must be broken in my life. Every stronghold, Mike. No matter what it is, it's got to be broken. No matter what it is. That's why when we laid hands on, on that man yesterday afternoon and prayed that that stroke would leave and the signs of it would leave everything that i believed about god and in god right then and there was laid on the line everything when we prayed for Braden a while ago everything was laid on the line everything but i got a word for the scoffers I know that yesterday's victories do not guarantee our tomorrow's triumphs. And I know that that sounds very down to most folks because all they see in that statement is no guarantee about tomorrow. But if you're one of them that you know who holds tomorrow, if you're one of them that goes, oh God, you brought me to a big in the day. <laughs> and I give you praise for it and I give you glory for it. But they may be a jumbo one coming tomorrow. But God, I got enough sense to know 
if you was able to bring me to this in the day, then now I know that you're able to bring me what through what tomorrow's faces, what next week faces, what next next month's gonna bring to my life. I know if you brought me through this one, then I know the scoffers of this world is not gonna win because he, you said God, get it, get it. You said God, you the same yesterday, today, and forever. What you done yesterday, you will do today, and you will do it forever. You will do it forever. Can't wait to preach this because it's just a lot of things in it. And I thought about Brother Keith and 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 the little Katie, Keith and Katie uh, Morris. I want to show you. Are they here? Guys, would you run up here real quick? This family's got more younger than Carter's got liver pills. <laughs> he married a baby producing machine. But when I, when I thought about something that I could show the scoffers, those that make fun of how we believe, and those that laughs at why we do things like we do. God brought you two to me. This is a sign to the scoffers that our God is real. You hear me? This is a sign to every one of them. And here's my answer to all of you that still don't believe that this is the infallible word of God and every word of it's true and every word of it's coming to pass. They were making a decision in their life that I kept telling my lady, I said, I, I just, I'm just telling you it's the wrong decision. I, can't, I couldn't sleep. I did everything that I, I knew to do to pass it away. And I said, I can't leave it anymore. I said, I got to call them. I called them. I said, you got to come to my home. If you ever get a call from pastor that says you, he needs to see you in his home. <laughs> you got to really love me to come. But this precious man and lady, they came to my home, sat down in front of me. And I gave them what I knew was godly counsel. Now, there's no doubt that the enemies warred against them about that decision. But they've changed their decision. And since then, I have never seen a family so blessed. They get blessed every way they turn. If they go this way, they get a blessing. If they go that way, they get a blessing. If they go that way, they get a blessing. And if my Lord in heaven, if they even back up, they back up into a blessing. The family is beautiful. The daughter graduated this year somewhere back there. They such such a blessing that they've added to their family again. <laughs> you sure? But they're so blessed that they do have a new member of their family. What's her name? Jasmine. Jasmine. You've seen them? I didn't get 
a, a ticket to go to nobody's graduation. So last night I was watching, I watched the picture and the reason you couldn't have no more tickets, you didn't have none extra. I mean, she was, she was just gathered around and she was holding Jasmine and they were just everywhere. But this is a picture to the scoffers. What God can do inside of a family that totally yields their self to him. Even sometimes when it goes against dreams and goes against desires to do this or that, and you're still going to get to do this and that plus that over there. In God's time, you'll be able to just go on your private jet. But this is my answer to the scoffers that says God no longer saves and heals and delivers and sets free and plans your life out the way he wants it to be. And when you totally submit to him, this scripture says, and I don't know why everybody always equates everything to money. I really don't like money. It stinks. You know, it smells bad. You can catch swamp a off of money. You think this, this virus is something, you wait till you get swamp a baby. That is bad. But money within itself is not bad. I, we have to have it. I believe God will give you every penny and every dollar he can trust you with. I believe he'll give it to you. But the love of money, that's the root of all evil. But this is my answer, and this is just pastor bragging on you too. Because the Lord brought you to me when I was all diving into this thought. You guys are amazing. And everywhere you go, I mean, they, they did our Mad Kids Church last Sunday. We just throwed them to the wolves. And they did great. <laughs> so yeah, 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 there's quite a few of them, they're wolves. And, uh, but <laughs> Danny in Brooklyn was on vacation, but they did, they did such a great job. But I, I want my family to come here for a minute. Y'all just come on. But this is my, this is my answer to the scoffers. Here's a living example of what God will do in a man and woman's life that will not only serve God, but will listen and obey God. That's why you're so blessed. You just amaze me. And I know God loves you. He cares for you. And he's watching over you, including the dog. They so blessed, they don't have a big little dog, a little dog. They got a dog big as a cow. They are just blessed. Y'all give them a hand as they take this. I want, I want to give the scoffers another message, and this is it. Mountains are still being moved, and strongholds are still being loosed. I will believe it. Now I can see that wonders are still what you do. And bodies are still being raised. And giants are still being slain. And I will believe it. Now I can see it. That one day.
show you another another testimony to the scoffers Chad wave at me y'all see Chad in prison for 17 years 19 years in prison for 19 years I still remember the first day he walked into this place and he is really um, an exception to the rule, especially when we had to go to just nothing but live stream. And, and, and you see, that's, that's where the enemy torments me. Because I understand the importance of this house and the gathering together of it. And I understand that the enemy has taken advantage of this time that we had to go through, but it was a time that the enemy had to take advantage of it because I, I know that of so many that, that they, depend, they depend so much on this that if they don't have it, then I am fearful that the enemy would take advantage of it them because they don't and by that advantage, slay them. And that is happening all over the church world. It's happening all over the church world. And, that's, and then I think about people that would get saved that's not getting saved. And I think about people that would get healed that's not getting healed. And I, and, and, and I think about all those things. And, and I understand, and I... I am still today counseling many, 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 many of our congregation. I'm counseling them to stay home. But I want you to understand that's an answer to the scoffers. Even COVID-19 couldn't slay him. You hear me? You hear me? It couldn't slay. But nobody else has permission to call that name. Couldn't slay. So he is an answer to the scoffers. After 19 years of imprisonment, gets out of prison, gives his heart and life to Christ, cleans his mess up. I said clean his mess up. And today, there's not a more faithful person that comes to this church than Chad Caldwell. Has he got it all figured out yet? No. No, he's still about half a mess. But I'm telling you, God loves messes. You hear me? He loves messes, and God is helping me. He's helping you. He's helping Chad. He's helping this and over here. He's helping that and over there. He's helping them at home. He's helping them watching. Our God, there's no distance in him. The same thing he does here, he'll touch you through that television. He'll touch you through that computer. He'll touch you through whatever you're watching on. We serve that kind of God. You want to know why? Because I can tell you why. Mountains are still being moved. 
strongholds are still being loosed I will believe it now I can see that wonders are still what you do and bodies are still being raised and giants are still being slain I will believe it now I can see it and wonders are still what you do wonders are We need a move. Come on, how many of you say that this morning? We need a move. We need a move. Come on, Sarah, say that. Oh, 
for praise. Hallelujah. God bless you so much for being with us today. We're going to continue to pray that God will touch your life, be with you in a very, very special way. And um, this coming Wednesday night, uh, between the hours of 5 and 7, we will be giving out our food boxes again. Uh, just come in. Many of you, many of you came last week, and I think it was a great turnout. We were able to give out a lot of boxes, so just please come by and uh, pick your food box up if the Lord tarries. If he don't tarry, we'll see you at the marriage supper. Wow. Wow. I just think about that, and I almost shout out of my britches. I just... I just can't help it. I'm just so excited about that. And, uh, and also, if he does delay his coming until Wednesday afternoon, I want to encourage you at 7 o'clock, um, we, are, we are doing, uh, going back in our, in our archives, and um, we are pulling out some services. We have been blessed getting them ready for you to watch. And uh, we're pulling out some services that I've watched Brother Bobby. He just shouted all over this place last Wednesday night. He had himself a time. Brother Eddis Miller right over there was just a shouting. Sister Mary Eight sitting right over there. She was just having herself a time. Her and Sister Marcy, they were just enjoying each other's presence. And God was so real. And Brother Taylor, y'all, he, he just came up. And, and I'd cry a while and shout a while and cry and snot some more. And uh, what God, God has given this house some treasures. And uh, I'm just so thankful. And so if, if the church is still on planet Earth next Wednesday night, uh, just um, look. And I'm, I promise you, it will bless you. And uh, I found out how to respond. Uh, and my lady told me I sure responded a lot, and uh, and I, I just I just they showed me how to do that, and I was just saying hi to everybody, but uh, but anyway, God God God, I, I think I said hi to myself a couple of times. I'm not for sure, yeah, and uh, but 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 anyway, uh, anyway, if you would stand to your feet, turn around, and just have some fellowship. And God bless you. We'll see you physically back here if the Lord deteriorates next Sunday morning.